one of the goals of Crossroad is to form you as deeply resilient persons. I really do believe that in small ways here at Crossroad, you have been given tools to be resilient in and through Christ. So just know that you are stronger than you may think you are when you leave here and you feel like so helpless that how are you going to persist in this life and in this world without each other? Um, because you can and you will. Thank you. Hey, Father Mike. Just iced tea and lemonade. And actually, it's near the bakery section on the right-hand side. And the water bottle should be there, too. Okay. All right. Great. Bye. So, here we are. This is where the magic happens in the Crossroad office. What makes session two unique is that the 4th of July is happening this session and the clergy lady is happening. So we're on our way to pick up the third van run of participants. There's 10 coming in right now. Um, they're coming from all over the country. I see some from Chicago and I think some from California. So it's pretty exciting. Um, we're picking up 10 participants and they're gonna be our last van run. So after this, we're gonna all congregate for dinner and for Vespers and be together for the first time as a whole group. So we're really excited. And these are the faces of our students who are coming. It's retro Facebook before Facebook even was a thing. Our invitation for you over the next 10 days is to explore um, this inner life that we have. Uh, it's a beautiful life, but it's also a life that requires courage. And sometimes those thoughts and feelings and experiences can be extremely powerful. Um, and, uh, and yet, what I'm suggesting and what we'll be suggesting over the course of these 10 days is that there's a force that's even more powerful that calls us to yearn to fly that calls us 
the desire to fly. How do we want to live our lives? Um, why do we want to live our lives that way? What are the sort of big questions about life? How can we actually not avoid those or pretend they're not important, but actually bring them to the forefront and wrestle with them? Because young adults need to do it and teenagers need to do it. And so to ask young adults to start doing it first among themselves and then to be able to convey their understanding with teenagers is just an amazing thing to be a part of. Number one, you're not always going to see the fruits of your labors when you're part of a ministry like this. To put your heart and soul into a program the way that Ann Bezzaridis does, writing grants, being behind the scenes, not necessarily even getting to have these kind of like mind-blowing experiences with the students and the different kind of enlightenment moments that they have. She's not always present for that. It's the greatest kind of martyrdom to accept that and to still remain and to abide in love behind the scenes doing the things that are required of a program like this to exist. Yeah, for sure. I think like already just with the group I've been in, we've already made relationships and it's really fun. And like, I like being in smaller groups where we can like know each other individually better. And then you also like build trust with that through Crossroad. I'm hoping I can gain the strength and courage to branch out and try new things and expand my horizons. <laughs> Right now, everybody's passing out lunch, and there's burritos going around. I think that they're chicken and steak. And, and they said, look at all these chickens. They arrived at Project Adventure just kind of moments ago, uh, and we're getting ready to do kind of our large, formal welcome to Project Adventure and get started with some activities. I think it's a really good way to like get to know people and to make friends really quickly because you're supporting each other and getting each other's backs. Well, it's kind of like a once in a lifetime chance, but if I give up, I'll never know if I was able to achieve it. When we were like talking about the American dream, um, I kind of realized how a lot of it's like dependent on other people. At the end of the day, you can't really control what other people do or how they feel. Do you guys, uh, do you guys know the quote at the end of the book where it says, happiness is only true when it's shared? Do you guys agree with that? If it's only like true when it's shared and you can't control other people, then are you in control of your own happiness?
God doesn't care what job, what career, what major you choose. God cares that you seek first the kingdom, that you become holy, that you love, that you live a holy life, how you live and not just what you do, that you become a human being right here and now and not a human doing then and there. Just because we're not in the service does not mean that we are not reading it as the church. We're not, we don't stop being orthodox when, we're not, when we leave the service. When you're making decisions in this life, you have a model. You have someone you can look at who can give you some idea of how you should act. The, uh, the uniqueness of the program like Crossroad it is that we uh, create a sacred space for the young people, the young men and women of our faith to ask questions and to get answers that have meaning in their lives, the, the present moment and also in the future. And that is the most important role of programs like this, to be able to open uh, dialogue, to open discussion with our young people to ask questions and then to, ask, to have answers ready for them. But when Father Mike talked about in the beginning of this program that you are given a choice and you are given freedom, you have the freedom to explore who Christ is in your own way right now. Open your hearts, open your minds, so that we can say them with passion, so that we can say them with fervor, and we can say them with our own voice, not just because someone told us. It's important to be exposed to like different kinds of like orthodoxy. We're all orthodox, but yet there's like different styles of worshiping, but yet it's all the same. So I think it's amazing that we have this opportunity. We can always look back on this later in life and have those memories to fall back on when we need them. It's like taking them home. I don't know where anyone's from, I don't know their backgrounds, I don't know their families, I don't know what you're like at home, but to me, this is my home. Um, and so sharing that with these people, it made me feel more connected to them. It made me feel like I belong with them and now that they have this part of me that we're even closer than we were. It made me tear up a little bit, I'm not gonna lie to you. I think it's very important because the people I've talked to who have gone here and are going here right now, as well as myself, have all had experiences that we haven't had anywhere else. I mean, orthodoxy isn't just what you perceive it as orthodoxy. There's so many different sects of it. And I think that, you know, learning about all of them really gives you a greater perspective on what orthodoxy is. And that's really what I want to talk to you guys about tonight is love and mercy and strength, those three things. First of all, love, because without love, you can't enter into life. 
Life is about love. Love for your work, your vocation, love for your family, love for God, love for your neighbor. You're gonna need mercy because your family, they're gonna make mistakes. The people in your parish are gonna make mistakes. Um, people around you are gonna make mistakes and you need to give mercy in order to make it in this world. But in order to do that, you need to have a measure of strength. And that's the great thing about being young is that you have a strength right now that is very, very powerful. And a lot of the problems you're gonna run into is actually when you don't take that strength seriously. Take it seriously, the strength that you have as young people. If you can, with the help of God right now, learn to really um, hone that strength, focus it, right? Some pretty amazing things can happen. It's sad, but it's also important to realize that we really are a lot more similar than we might think um, off the bat. And it's important to just realize that we all have the same greatest commandment to love one another. We have a lot of good things going on, but the best thing we have is the Crossroad Program. And I'm counting on you, as is Ian, as is George, as is everyone else, to make a difference in your community. One of the big things I learned is no matter what stereotype you hear or whatever, you always have to be there and be ready to help people who are in need. Because they sometimes they can't help themselves or they just need a friend. So that's why I think it's so big. If I can make one person smile a day, that's a successful day. I've made mistakes and I've now learned from those mistakes. I've learned the benefits of those mistakes and it has made me into a new person. The idea of being yourself and not being judged for it is a really great feeling here at Crossroad. At this point forward in my life, it's never going to be the same, but it's moving forward in such a positive direction. It's just incomprehensible about what we have learned here. We, we won't even realize it now. Uh, like We'll go home and like just be thinking about reading through our journals and just be like, wow, I didn't see that before. I just wrote that down and didn't know what it meant. Not I wasn't to realize how big of an experience this is until far after. But um, once again, I just wanted to thank everyone for um, all the support on this program, and it wouldn't be possible without you. We're like a like a big machine, and all the all the kids are all the parts, but it doesn't work without an engine. So thank you very much. Question: What is it? Who is it? I'm looking at. What's behind? the retina of my eyes. <clears throat> I, mean, I don't even know your names. I don't know where you're from. But what I'm seeing are a bunch of high school students, seniors, juniors. I'm seeing a hidden hero. Please take those two words down, because that's, that's your identity. Hidden hero. MTV crib style. So this is my crib. Welcome to my crib. Uh, so I got every restaurant imaginable in this. My crib. No bedroom or bathroom, but it's okay. We're at Faneuil Hall in Boston, uh, which is a marketplace. We're gonna go eat and shop. It's gonna be a good time, dude. Bus. We're going to Boston Commons. We're going to have a picnic. And it's going to be really nice. It's sunny, a little hot, but we're going to enjoy some nice food and have a good time.
at the Boston Common and then it was too hot so we left and we came to Clergy Lady and I ran into this gentleman and this is actually my dad. Uh, father. I'm Elias father. I'm so happy that Elias is involved with the camp and he's in the staff. Yeah. I'm very proud of him <laughs> and prouder than his father. It was important to visit Clergy Lady because we were able to see the different exhibitions that were here and um, there were people selling books, people selling CDs, uh, chant CDs, vestments. So, it was just icons. nice to see icons. It was nice to see what people could do in the church. So, I think it's crucial that we have programs like this because, or at least for me, I've learned so much about myself. And like, without this, I don't know where I'd be. And um, I, we're all in a very similar position, being at this late stage of high school, and that. We have to figure out what we want to do for the rest of our lives. So uh, by learning more about ourselves and our call in this world, no matter like religion, like ethnicity, whatever defining demographic you can think of, I think programs like these are crucial in just discovering yourself and being yourself around people who are loving and caring and genuine people. Right, so there's this sense of like, you have your true self hiding somewhere deep inside of you, right? And that true self wants to be revealed. That true self wants to express itself to other people because that's who you are. And, it, and you know that when you're not expressing who you are to those around you, that there's something not right about that, just internally. But the fear is that because whether other people will admit it or not, here's the truth. The truth is that everybody is yearning both to express and reveal their true selves, and everybody is yearning to be treated by others with that other person's true self. Um, the greatest expression of love that we can give to anyone, including to ourselves, is the ability to be a real, an honest and authentic and raw self in their presence. The one thing that I really learned from Crossroad also is to be in the present moment and the fact that we've been doing that so much and we've been really, we've been in such a mindset that now trying to think about the future or the past, it's just, it's so hard now. You know, after just 10 days, we've really we really changed. The relationships we built here are really important to me in keeping those relationships up and growing in our faith even more together throughout our life. And just... Yeah. Go, Zoe, go! Go, go, go! Um, and just like, they've, everyone's just so supporting and so loving, and I was completely not expecting that. So I'm just really thankful I finally, that I, that I decided to come. People that loved each other through Christ that are willing to go out of their way to, to express their love for one another. And that is something that is so special. And it's something that I really feel like you can't get as strongly anywhere else. Crossroad was the most amazing place to get this this group of people. Heck yes! Crossroad is the place to go if you want to learn your full potential. One thing that Crossroad really does amazing is we see where we are now and where we want to go and they just show us how to get there. Uh, Crossroad has been a life-changing experience. It's been incredible and something that I will never forget the rest of my life. A lot of the stuff that we learned is not stuff that will ever go away. To live in the present moment, and I, there aren't really many words to describe how amazing it's been. 
like looking back, I don't know, I just feel like I was only like half a person before I came here. Now I'm leaving satisfied, fulfilled, and whole. I've definitely become a new person, so. Um, I'm feeling pretty content right now. I um, really enjoyed all these days um, of learning and experiencing new things. Uh, we're about to leave. Um, we're leaving Kosovo right now. We're getting ready. Uh, right now we are walking to say goodbye to some of our friends. I can say this program, Kosovo, is blessed by God. Uh, I think I can, I can tell people now that I have got a holy experience because this is what God um, tell us to do, to show people the word of God. My fellow Crossroaders, you guys have like helped me discover myself and just have always been there for me. And like day one, you genuinely accepted me with open arms without questions or just, it's just pure joy and happiness. And our entire trip together was just, I've never experienced this before and it's that awe-inspiring. I feel a little bit lost leaving, like the bus just rolled away and we're all waving goodbye and it was super, super sad, but it's cool that we're going off all across the United States and our family is dispersed and everywhere we could ever want to go, we'll always have a friend in that place. I will always have these friends in my life and that love will never, will never die. Selfishly speaking, I can say that I feel very blessed um, that I got to experience my final crossroad uh, with you. Um, and there were some incredible uh, moments in which I personally felt God's grace and presence uh, in a way that I can probably say I've never felt before in my life. It's kind of a joke among the staff that Father Mike will often say, there's a sense in which. And there is a sense in which that's true. And even though it's kind of become like this punchy one-liner that a lot of us will you know, use as a form of endearment, it points to the sensitivity in which he approaches every single moment that there is a student before him who desperately needs to know love and who's desperately searching for what love looks like in a real present way in the world. The seeds that you have both planted and watered, as um, Anne mentioned last night, I know will grow and just blossom in the young lives that you have touched over the past seven years and beyond in a way that makes me so hopeful for the future of the church. Um, and a thank you, and a thank you is simply not enough. This baton feels super heavy <laughs> when it's being passed from you. I was not really able to feel the impact of what it was like to be doing the last session until pretty much the last day when I brought a water bottle up to the front of the room when Kira was talking, a water bottle that looked very much like a baton. And I said to Kira, who will be the new director of Crossroad. This water bottle that looks very much like a baton <laughs> is now being passed on to the new And that's when I pretty much stopped because I was on the verge of losing it. Uh, but I'm profoundly grateful for the experience, that's for sure.